Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are talking about actual flow turbines and in the last uh, class, last lecture, we talked about how to uh, design and bring into uh, the design uh, steps and design features uh, three dimensionality of flow through actual flow turbines. Now, we know that the flow through the axial flow turbines as in axial flow compressors is normally annulus in nature and that flow through the annulus uh, space that is available to the turbines uh, is often uh, not exactly uh, uniform. So, some aspect of the non-uniformity or some aspect of the uh, variation from uh, the lower uh, radius to the outer radius or inner radius to the outer radius and more specifically from the root to the tip of the blade of a rotor needs to be factored into uh, to begin with in the design and later on in the computations and of course, later on in the analysis. We have seen how some of these things can be uh, brought into uh, the simple analysis uh, that uh, we had done in the last class without getting into uh, more complex uh, computational analysis. As I have mentioned, we shall do computational uh, an introduction to computational analysis through turbo machines towards the end of this lecture series, but right now we are looking at turbine specific uh, certain theories which factor in the three dimensionality of the flow and built it into the design. So, most of it is indeed used for design and then immediate post design analysis to find out how the turbine is actually going to behave. So, in today's lecture, we will look at some problems that actually use these uh, theories that we have done in the last class and then try to actually solve some problems which are prescribed problems and from the problem statement we try to figure out what kind of solutions can be arrived at using the theories that we have done in the last lecture. And towards the end, we, I will leave you with a few problems to solve by yourselves, so that you can get the feel of the application of these theories to actual problems, realistic problems and you also get a feel of the numbers. It is essential for an engineer to get the feel of the numbers and that is why it is essential that we look at a few problems, which are probably a little uh, textbook problems, simplistic problems where you know typically you have all the data you require. In a real life problem, you often may not actually have all the data that is required to solve, but we are dealing with problems where the problem statement gives you all the data that you require and now you need to uh, use the theories that we have done to arrive at solutions and in a process one learns how the solutions would look like and indeed as I said you get a feel of the numbers, what the numbers would look like. So, that is very important uh, for all uh, practical engineers. So, let us look at some of the problems related to three dimensional flow in axial flow turbines. Now, in axial flow turbines uh, the we are going to do some solve problems and then I leave you with some exercise problems to solve for yourselves. 
Now, in the solve problems, we will first look at the problem statement. In the first problem, the problem statement uh, shows that a constant nozzle exit angle, which we have designated earlier as alpha 2, is being used for actual flow turbine design, in which it is prescribed that the temperature drop should be 150 K and at the hub the blade velocity or blade speed uh, u is 300 meters per second and uh, at the tip it is 400 meters per second. At uh, it is prescribed that alpha 2 is 60 which is constant as prescribed from uh, root to the tip hub to the tip and alpha 3 is uh, 0 that is 0 world at the exit of the rotor. The radius ratio given for this particular problem statement is 0.75 that is uh, hub radius to tip radius ratio is 0.75 that is prescribed here. The problem asks for solution in which you should complete the design velocity diagrams at hub mean and tip of the stage and thereafter calculate the velocity components if the design is a free vortex design for the turbine and compare the results of that with that of constant nozzle exit angle. So, one can uh, look at the whole thing from a free, free vortex point of view and compare the results. So, this is a problem statement which we can now try to find a solution to. Now, at the rotor inlet station, we have done in the last class, the equation for variation of world component uh, is defined by the uh, variation of alpha 2 and that is given by C w 2 by C w m, which is the mean. Uh, and that is also equal to C A 2 by C A 2 mean, which is also equal to C 2 by C 2 m, which is mean and all these velocity ratios are equal to radius ratio r by r mean r being at any radius to the power sin square alpha 2. Now, this is what we had done in the last uh, lecture, following which what we get is at the rotor exit, uh, the actual velocity C A 3 square is equal to C A 3 mean square plus twice U m into C uh, W twice m whole thing uh, multiplied by 1 minus uh, radius ratio r by r m to the power cos square alpha 2. Now, this is also the theory that we had uh, the expression we had uh, ex, uh, shown in the last lecture. Now, from the prescribed uh, radius ratio that is given, we can see that the mean to tip radius ratio would be 0.875 and mean to hub radius ratio would be 1.166 that is calculated from the hub to tip ra radius ratio that is prescribed in the problem statement. Now, the work uh, done by the rotor is given by the Euler's equation, which you are all aware of. Now, in this particular problem statement, alpha 3 would be equal to 0, exit comp uh, will component is 0, which means C w 3 indeed would be 0 and in which case the specific enthalpy rise or you know specific work that we normally use for aerothermodynamic relations that is uh, C p into delta t would be equal to u m into C w 2 m C w 3 being 0 and from which we can write that C w 2 m uh, would indeed be 492 meters per second and corresponding C a 2 would be from the velocity triangle that you can uh, draw at station 2 that is before the rotor and that would come out to be 284 meters per second as per the prescription uh, that also would be equal to uh, actual velocity at the exit of the rotor C A 3 
m. Now, at the rotor hub uh, at the inlet of the rotor, one can write uh, actual velocity C A 2 H is equal to C A 2 m to the uh, multiplied by a radius ratio r m by r to the power sin square alpha 2 and this would yield uh, actual velocity of 318.8 meters per second. On the other hand, the world component at hub at the inlet C w 2 h would be uh, C w 2 m uh, into r m by r to the power sin square alpha 2 and that would be 552.2 meters per second. So, you now start getting the uh, components of the velocities at uh, station 2 that is before the uh, rotor at the rotor inlet. Now, at the rotor tip of the inlet, one can now find the actual velocity using the same relation that is C A 2 m into r m by r to the power sin square alpha 2 and in which case uh, the actual velocity would now be 257 meters per second and uh, the world component uh, C w 2 tip would be 447 meters per second. So, as one can see that the world component has uh, actually decreased uh, from hub to the tip whereas, the actual velocity has also decreased a little from hub to the tip and this is a consequence of the fact that uh, alpha 2 has been held constant from root to the tip of this prescribed problem. So, as a result of which we now have all the velocity components that are required at the inlet to the rotor. Now, at the rotor tip outlet we can find what the actual velocity uh, uh, would be and this uh, can be found from the actual velocity relation that we had done earlier and that is given by C A 3 equal to whole thing root over C A 3 square plus twice u m C w 2 m multiplied by 1 minus radius ratio r by r m to the power cos square alpha 2. And if you do that, we can calculate the actual velocities at tip and hub as uh, at the outlet as 262 and 306 meters per second. So, once you apply uh, the relations that we had done in the last class uh, for three dimensional flow uh, estimation, we now have the actual velocity that tip and hub at the outlet to the rotor. On the other hand, if we uh, calculate all the values with reference to the free vortex design, we can see that the velocities that we get in comparison to the nozzle angle can be now uh, written down in a tabular form and one can see that these values are uh, the ones in constant nozzle angle are given in uh, red and the free vortex values are given in uh, black and the actual velocities as you can see in um, in front of the rotor and behind the rotor are constant for free vortex. Only the world component is changing as per free vortex variation from tip to uh, hub. On the other hand, for constant nozzle angle, as one can see, all the velocities are varying and uh, essentially only at the mean the values of uh, free vortex and the constant nozzle angle are same at the tip uh, as well as at the at the mean uh, the actual velocity the world component velocity and the exit actual velocity they are all same at the mean but at the hub and the tip the constant nozzle angle gives completely different values compared to that of free vortex now this is something which you may like to take a look at and you may like to sit down and draw all the uh, velocity triangles uh, that are born out of this uh, two calculations, two sets of uh, design calculations and you will probably find that you get completely different blade shapes. The blade shapes that come out of this uh, two design exercises would indeed be quite different from each other. 
and that would tell you that if you use different kind of design uh, law or design philosophy, you would in end up getting quite different blade shapes, the three dimensional blade shapes. Now, if we uh, go on to the second example, in which uh, the problem statement reads that it is proposed that for design of an axial flow turbine, two design methods are to be explored. Now, uh, first design method that is uh, prescribed is uh, C w 2 m is equal to C w 2 h uh, that is equal to C w 2 t that means, the world components at hub mean and tip are equal to each other. Now, this type of design is what we have uh, called earlier a uh, solid body uh, essentially uh, uh, design that means, the uh, fluid behaves more like a solid body and uh, correspondingly uh, the wheel components everywhere are uh, same. The second design that is prescribed is where C A 2 is equal to C A 2 uh, uh, hub into the radius ratio up to tip radius ratio to the power sin square alpha 2. Uh, which uh, somehow tries to make use of the constant alpha 2 prescription and that is your case B, the second uh, design that is uh, suggested here in case B. And in case C, we have uh, C w uh, ratio C w 2 t to C w 2 h as uh, equal to the radius ratio r h by r t. Now, that if you remember is nothing but your free vortex design. So, we have three design that is suggested for uh, design of an axial flow turbine. One in which the flow behaves like a solid body. The second one in which uh, one may use the alpha 2 equal to constant that is constant nozzle angle prescription and K c is which uh, resembles uh, of that of a free vortex design. What is prescribed are some common data and these are the actual velocity at the mean is prescribed as 200 meters per second, entry alpha 2 is 60 degrees, exit alpha 3 is 0, the degree of reaction is 0.5 at mean and radius ratio prescribed is 0.8. What is asked for is complete the velocity diagrams for all the cases. The velocity diagrams are asked for because those are the velocity diagrams based on which final blade shapes would be created. So, uh, the velocity diagrams would give a fairly good uh, idea about the blade shapes that are being created by uh, three cases A, B and C. Let us look at how to go about uh, finding a solution to this particular uh, problem statement. From the prescribed data of the example 2, one can calculate that uh, the radius ratio R m by R t would be 0.889 and uh, R t by R m would be 1.11. This is calculated from the hub to tip radius ratio that is prescribed in the problem. And then uh, the world component at mean C w 2 m can be found from the mean velocity uh, diagram that is C a 2 into tan alpha 2 and that gives uh, C w 2 m equal to 346.5 meters per second and it is prescribed that alpha 3 is 0. So, C w 3 m would be 0. Now, C w 3 m equal to 0 is what we had done in the first problem also where it is prescribed that C w 3 m could be uh, given as 0 or alpha 3 is given as 0. This is a fairly uh, uh, standard uh, prescription for many of the designs, because what happens is uh, when the flow is going out of the turbine quite often the prescription often uh, encourages that the flow going out of the turbine does not have any world component, because the world component going out of a turbine 
uh, typically of a uh, single turbine or a multi stage turbine last stage uh, would be quite useless. So, typically of uh, a turbine it is quite often uh, unless you know it is one of the earlier turbines or one of the uh, middle stage turbines uh, the prescription quite often comes with alpha 3 equal to 0 uh, which leaves a 0 wheel component and if the flow is going into a nozzle or going into exhaust uh, any wheel component present is quite useless. Uh, only component that is useful for nozzle effect for thrust making is the actual component. So, giving a prescription of wheel component 0 is pretty much a uh, practical and uh, standard uh, prescription for turbine design. As I mentioned, unless you are designing a turbine which is one of the middle stages of a multi stage turbine. So, as we have seen in both the problems. Uh, C w 3 and alpha 3 have been prescribed to be uh, 0 and as a result of which uh, the problem does become a little simple, uh, but the prescription is realistic. It is not really idealistic. Let us get back at the problem. For this particular problem statement, it is given that degree of reaction R x is 0.5. Now, that means it brings us back to the symmetrical blading concept that uh, you may have done earlier and certainly done in some detail in actual flow compressors. So, the moment you put a degree of reaction 0.5, the symmetrical blading concept comes in and then you have at the mean alpha 2 m equal to beta 3 m that would be equal to 60 degree as prescribed and alpha 3 m equal to beta 2 m equal to 0 degree as prescribed. This of course, makes the problem a little simple to handle. Uh, however, many turbines in the past and the early days of turbine design have been used uh, using these kind of uh, somewhat simpler design prescriptions and those turbines were uh, operating quite well. It makes the designer's job definitely uh, simple. and. Uh, probably analysis also becomes simple. Um, in those days long back 30, 40 years back, if you may remember uh, the aid from uh, computational flow dynamics was not available and as a result uh, the refinement that is possible in today's turbine design uh, was not really available in those days and as a result uh, somewhat simpler design prescriptions were often used for design and those were functional, they worked fine. So, uh, a similar somewhat simpler design prescription has been also prescribed here. Now, the blade velocity u m uh, would come out to be same as uh, C w 2 m, because uh, your beta 2 m is 0 and uh, as a result of which it is 346.5 meters per second as calculated just a little above and at any radius uh, we can now calculate the blade velocities um, from the radius ratios that we have just written down. So, the hub uh, blade velocity would be 308 meters per second and the tip uh, blade velocity u t would be 385 meters per second. So, the blade velocities vary all the way from root to tip as per uh, omega into r concept. Now, for case A, we have three cases to be uh, actually looked at and as I indicated, this is a fluid which is uh, prescribed to be behaving like a solid body for a case which we have done in the last lecture uh, n equal to 0 for the equation C w to equal to r to the power n. Now, when you put n equal to 0, it is a case which fluid behaves like a solid body. Now, the actual speed is calculated uh, from the actual velocity expression derived from the energy equation for the case n equal to 0 and this comes out to be C a 2 is equal to C a 2 m uh, whole thing root over 1 minus 2 tan square alpha 2 m into ln uh, radius ratio r by r m 
Now, this can be derived, you can sit down and derive it the same way we had done earlier for the case n equal to 0 from the energy equation that we had written down involving the uh, various velocity components. And you have to put the value of n equal to 0 there and you would uh, arrive at this uh, solution uh, which we are looking at for uh, actual velocity at any station with relation to actual velocity at uh, mean radius uh, along the blade length. Now, using this you can also calculate the uh, angles across the rotor from the above considerations. If you do that, the solutions that you get for the case A uh, tells you that the actual velocity prescribed at the mean was uh, uh, 200 and C w 2 at the mean was found to be 346.5. On the other hand, we found the actual velocity is varying from tip to hub and uh, both at the rotor entry as well as at the rotor exit. At the rotor exit, the C w 3 is prescribed to be uh, actually uh, 0 and uh, correspondingly the value of alpha 3 also has been prescribed to be 0. The alpha 2 variation is shown here as part of our results. It varies all the way from hub to the tip. Correspondingly, the beta 3 also varies exactly in the same manner from hub to the tip and the beta 2 values are uh, shown here. Uh, it is 0 at the mean as we have calculated as has been prescribed the degree of reaction being 0. However, there is a small value of beta 2 at the hub and a small value of beta 2 at the mean uh, at the tip that has been shown here. Now, if we move to the results of uh, case B, the prescribed condition is C A 2 T is equal to C A 2 H into radius ratio R H by R T prescribed uh, here in the problem to the power sin square alpha 2. Now, this of course, uh, brings us to the fact that all the velocities at the uh, tip and hub and mean can be the ratios of them can be uh, put down as equal to each other. All of them would be equal to uh, some uh, relation to uh, alpha 2. Now, this allows us to write down that uh, for constant nozzle angle, which is the prescribed case B that we are looking at. C A 2 can be now written down as C A 2 m into radius ratio R m by R to the power sin square alpha 2. And uh, in case of C w uh, 2, that will be C w 2 m to the into radius ratio R m by R to the power sin square alpha 2 and C 2 is equal to C 2 m to the uh, multiplied by radius ratio R m by R to the power sin square alpha 2. So, for constant nozzle angle case, all the velocities C A 2, C w 2 and C 2, uh, which is the absolute velocity can be found from the mean uh, values that is at the mean radius uh, to hub to tip at any radius by using this radius ratio concept. If we do that at the station 3, at the exit of the rotor, it is prescribed that alpha 3 is equal to 0 and C w 3 is also equal to 0. The expression for actual velocity comes out as we have done in the last uh, lecture is C A 3 square is equal to C A 3 square 3 uh, C A 3 m plus twice u m C w 2 m uh, multiplied by 1 minus radius ratio to the power cos square alpha 2. Now, this allows us to calculate C A 3 at uh, exit of the rotor. If we now uh, use the relation that we have done, which is essentially for uh, the case uh, B, which is ex exit angle from the rotor is held constant from root to the tip of the blade. Uh, now, this is something which we have discussed in the last lecture that holding the exit angle from the rotor constant from root to the tip of the blade makes the rotor uh, untwisted or very lightly twisted 
Now, this is important for uh, stator or nozzle blade cooling purpose. Uh, we shall be doing the cooling technology uh, from next uh, lecture onwards. Um, but this particular design philosophy of holding alpha 2, two equal to constant from uh, hub to tip or root to tip of the uh, blade uh, of the stator uh, essentially caters to uh, cooling technology. And if we apply this in this present problem, what we see is the results that we get uh, for case B. Let us look at the results of case B. What we see here is uh, the actual velocity is now varying uh, all the way from hub to the tip. At the hub, it is 218.5. At the mean, it is prescribed as 200. So, the variation of uh, actual velocity at the entry as well as at the exit is quite pronounced from hub to tip. The values of C w 2 are also variable from hub to tip quite substantially. C w 3 is being held constant, alpha 2 by prescription is held constant, alpha 3 by prescription is 0. We get a variation of beta 2 from 17.9 to uh, minus 19.4 and we get a variation of beta 3 from 54 to 69 from hub to tip. So, these are the results of the case B, which is of a constant alpha 2 from hub to the tip of the stator nozzle. Now, we can move to the case C. Now, case C is what we had seen was actually the free vortex design. Now, free vortex design as uh, we have mentioned before is not the most popular design for actual flow turbine, even though it is a very popular design uh, for actual flow compressors. For turbine, it is not the most popular design, but it is the simpler design. It of course, works. If you make actual flow turbine with uh, uh, free vortex design, it will surely work. There is no reason why it should not work, but it is not the most popular design today. And ever since the cooling technology came into the market, the free vortex design has been essentially replaced by the constant alpha 2 design, which is the more popular design uh, philosophy for turbines, essentially as I mentioned to cater to uh, cooling technology. But let us look at the results that we get for this problem uh, statement, problem 2, case C for uh, free vortex design uh, philosophy. If we apply free vortex design philosophy, uh, the world components at tip and hub, uh, the ratios are directly related to the uh, hub to tip radius ratio. Uh, now, if we apply the same at the outlet also, uh, C w 2 also is uh, held constant as per free vortex principle across the blade at mean radius. So, C w uh, C a 2 is equal to C, C A 3 and if you apply all this in the as per the free vortex law, we get a set of results directly as per very well known free vortex law uh, prescriptions. The results that we get are that the actual velocities are held constant uh, from hub to tip as well as across the rotor. C w 2 varies substantially from uh, hub to the tip as per free vortex law uh, and which would tell you that you would end up getting a substantially twisted blade. Uh, C w 3 is being held constant. So, the trailing edge would be uh, rather linear. On the other hand, the value of alpha 3 is 0 corresponding to the prescription. Alpha 2 varies uh, from hub to tip and uh, the C w 2 variation shows that. And then of course, you have the variation of beta 2, which goes minus at the tip. Uh, and this is uh, something that comes out of the free vortex design. And as a result of which, you get a variation of beta 3, uh, which uh, uh, also varies from up to the tip of the blade. So, you have the results of the case C tabulated here. And then, 
we have three cases A, B and C. These variations can now be all put together into one table, which uh, essentially tries to compare the three cases A, B and C. And as you can see, the case A is given in red, the case B that is a constant nozzle angle is given in B and the free vortex design is given in case C and all three of them are brought together. If you sit down, use the velocities that are given, the angles that are given and if you draw the velocity triangles of all the cases, you would probably get a very clear picture of what kind of uh, blades actually come out, the three dimensional blade shapes that should come out of uh, the three cases that are prescribed here. The three cases that are prescribed here had certain commonalities that is the mean actual velocity prescribed were 200, the exit uh, angles were prescribed to be uh, 0, the wheel uh, component of the exit were prescribed to be 0. So, with those common prescriptions, we tried to put together the blades that would come out uh, even with those commonalities and we see that three completely different blade shapes are likely to result from three uh, cases that are prescribed here for axial flow turbine design. So, as I mentioned, you can probably sit down and actually draw the velocity triangles and you would find that three different cases. Uh, three different blade shapes and you would indeed need to choose different airfoil shapes, different uh, blade sec sections from hub to tip for e each of these three cases. So, you end up having three completely different blade shapes for three different design philosophies even though we started off with common uh, data prescriptions uh, for all the three cases. So, this is an example which uh, tells you with certain simplifications a simplified problem. It still tells you that if you have three different design philosophies, you end up with three completely different blade shapes. I will now leave you with a few problems which you can sit down and solve for yourself and uh, get a feel of the numbers that come out of solving of uh, examples, uh, problems that are uh, prescribed with numerical values. So, let us look at some of the problems you can uh, solve for yourselves. The first exercise, exercise problem, the problem statement reads that an axial turbine rotor is prescribed with a rotor inlet and outlet flow in radial equilibrium, which means the static pressure and the dynamic uh, pressure are balanced at the inlet and outlet of the rotor. The world component of the flow is designed to vary radially as per this prescription as C w uh, at the inlet as A r minus B y r and at the outlet uh, as A r plus B y r. Now, A and B are the constants and uh, what is uh, required for you to find is find the inlet and outlet exit velocities and the expressions for those uh, velocities. In this case, uh, you can see the answers given here and the actual velocities of course, would remain constant uh, across the rotor. So, we are dealing with the rotor only. So, the problem statement is essentially for rotor. Part B of the problem is it is prescribed that at mean radius given value is 0.3 meters, the actual velocity is 10 meters per second and the degree of reaction is 0.5. The blade loading coefficient is uh, prescribed as, uh, as per the definition psi rotor is equal to uh, work done specific work done H 0 by u tip square and the rpm is 7640 rpm the up to tip radius ratio is given as a 0.5 and at 80 percent of the rotor radius, it is uh, required for you to find the rotor relative flow inlet 
uh, and outlet angles. So, what you are required to find the beta values uh, beta 2 and beta 3 for the particular uh, problem statement that is given here. Now, the answers given are 43.2 degrees and 10.4 degrees for beta 2 and beta 3. So, you can try to sit down and see whether you can arrive at those answers. The second exercise problem that is given is the gas exits from the turbine stator or nozzle at a radially constant uh, angle alpha 2. So, it is a constant nozzle exit angle problem. The gas is prescribed to be in radial equilibrium. The actual velocity variation at that station is given as C A 2 into r to the power sin square alpha 2 equal to constant. This is what we have done in our uh, lectures also. And for a turbine in which the actual velocity at the radius 0.3 is again uh, prescribed as 100 meters per second. And if the turbine as stated above is designed with a constant uh, alpha 2 equal to 45 degree, find the actual velocity at that station at 0.6 meters radius. Now, the answer given here is very simple and that is 70.7 meters per second. So, it is a constant exit stator exit angle problem and you have to apply the uh, relations that we have uh, done in the lecture or in the earlier problem that has been solved for you. The third and the last problem that is uh, prescribed for you to uh, solve is an actual turbine is designed with free vortex at stator nozzle exit and zero whirl at stator at rotor exit. So, it is a, a free vortex problem applied at stator nozzle exit and a rotor inlet. So, the station between the stator and the rotor carries free vortex prescription. For the following operating condition that is at the entry T 0 1 is equal to 1000 k mass flow is given as 32 kgs per second, the hub radius is 0.56, the tip radius is 0.76 meters, rpm prescribed is 8000, the degree of reaction is 0.5 and uh, actual velocity is constant that is 183 meters per second and it is prescribed that the inlet and exit absolute velocities are equal to each other that is C 1 is equal to C 3 you are required to find C 2 that is the nozzle exit velocity. As you know, it expands uh, hugely from C 1 to C 2 and then you are required to find the Mach number, uh, maximum Mach number at the stage. In this particular stage, typically it is most likely to be uh, somewhere in the uh, nozzle exit and then the reaction at the root the power output of this particular working turbine and T 0 3 and T 3 at the stage exit. So, these are the uh, numerical uh, values that you need to find out of this prescribed problem. The answers uh, the solutions that are given here is that the nozzle exit velocity uh, C 2 is, is would be 480 meters per second the maximum mark, mark number in this stage is uh, so solved as point, uh, 0 0.0.818. The reaction at the root is 0 0.08 and you remember at the root it is quite often, especially if it is free vortex, it is likely to be very close to 0 and 0 of course, would mean an impulse turbine and we are looking at a, a problem in which the solution actually comes pretty close to giving you an impulse uh, uh, station or impulse section at the root of this particular uh, turbine. And then the power output uh, or work done for this particular rotor given the mass flow is 3.42 megawatts and uh, the temperatures at the exit. T 0 3 is 907 and the static temperature T 3 is 892 K. Now, you can sit down and try to solve this problem and see whether you can come. You can use standard values of um, uh, gas constant R that is uh, 
247 uh, joules per kg kgk and uh, the value of cp as uh, 1147 uh, joules per kgk so you can use those standard values to solve this problem in which uh, numericals are given and you are required to find the uh, certain prescribed uh, velocities mach numbers uh, work done and the exit temperature so I will leave you with these problems for you to solve for yourself, so that you can get a feel of the numbers uh, that typically come out of actual flow turbine design. So, some of these problems would give you an idea how the turbine design is indeed proceeded with and what kind of numbers you get, what kind of variations you get, you get a feel of the numbers uh, by solving these problems. In the next class, we will be looking at turbine blade cooling, because in this class and in the earlier lecture, we had looked at the design philosophy of alpha 2 as constant from root to the tip and we have stated again and again that this particular design philosophy essentially caters to turbine blade cooling. In the next lecture onwards, we will devote ourselves to looking at this turbine blade cooling technology and how it impacts the turbine blade, the turbine blade shape and essentially uh, the aerodynamics or aerothermodynamics of the flow over the turbine blades is very strongly impacted and uh, essentially uh, the aerodynamics of the blade changes uh, hugely by application of cooling technology we will look at various cooling technologies and how do they actually uh, impact the turbine design of modern axial flow turbines. Specifically, these cooling technologies are very widely used in aero engines and we will look at some of the uh, typical examples of these applied cooling technologies in turbine, axial turbine, rotor and stator. So, we shall be doing turbine cooling technologies from next lecture onwards.